I'm an astrophysicist, which means I study the physics of the universe. So the light that comes from all of the objects in the universe, and now even the gravitational waves that we can detect coming from the universe, allows us to form physical models of the stars and the galaxies and the planets and even the universe itself. Astronomy Saves the World is a book that demonstrates that astronomy is full of uh, basic maths and basic physics that can actually help develop critical thinking skills uh, to the K-12 through audience. So I think this is incredibly important uh, because the K-12 through audience is going to be the next generation of scientists, engineers, mathematicians and even voters. I think there is a science literacy problem uh, across a lot of the world. Um, the education systems uh, seem to be going backwards. Um, we want to be able to develop uh, the natural talents and passions that students have uh, so that they go on to have happy and fulfilling lives. I know this is an anecdote, but in my own personal experience, I was brought up uh, in the traditional way of church is what you do on Sunday morning. Um, and I actually think that it was one of the, the first uh, scientific uh, studies that I did was to go back to the original literature and read it from the source. Um, and I got a couple of pages in, put it down and walked away. Um, and ever since then, um, it, I've, I've remembered that anything that you, every, anything that you hear, you should go and go back and read the literature, do the literature review, uh, see what it's all about. And um, I think uh, if we were to encourage that type of scientific thinking uh, earlier and earlier in life, especially in the K-12 through environment, um, religion may not have such a heavy hold on society that it does today. One of the uh, benefits and indeed flaws of the internet is that you get to see uh, a huge spectrum uh, of opinion. Uh, and one of the extremes uh, of this spectrum that we do see is with the, with the flat earthers. So we definitely come across them online. In fact, I purposefully have joined several flat earth society Facebook groups just to get a sense of uh, what's going on there. And for me, there's something quite special about the flat earth society. Uh, when we talk about conspiracies, you can kind of gauge how desperate that conspiracy has to be by the number of people that have to be involved. And in the case of the Flat Earth Society, it's not just a question of governments and uh, the airline industry and every country's space program, uh, all of the technology that we use that's based on satellite imagery, but it's even members of the Flat Earth Society themselves. Because if you're a Flat Earther in New York, uh, calling one of your Flat Earth colleagues in uh, Los Angeles and simply ask them a question about the current altitude of the sun. The Flat Earth Society member in Los Angeles has to lie to you in order to maintain your Flat Earth worldview. And so the Flat Earth Society members, it's a particularly special, a particularly extreme case, I think, for these, these conspiracy spectrum uh, type problems in that not only does it have to be everyone uh, in the world, but it includes even members of the Flat Earth Society involved in essentially a personal global conspiracy against one person. I, I, that's just an incredible, incredible uh, situation to be in. It's astounding. So there appears to be this group of people that somehow have an epiphany about the physical construct of the universe and how their idea that they had whilst falling asleep at night or, or whilst they're in the shower in the morning is somehow, despite their complete lack of understanding of basic physics, is somehow a magical explanation of how the universe works. And I think people have become more and more confident in, in recent uh, decades because of some of the popularization of, of scientists, so the, uh, beginning perhaps with, uh, with Darwin and Einstein and now we see uh, Krauss, for example. Uh, but these people are coming up with um, these crazy ideas that completely miss fundamental physics. Uh, one of the most popular that I see um, is called the electric universe. Uh, and that, that, that is a hypothesis that says you can describe uh, almost any process in the universe in terms of a frequency of a wave. Um, and how uh, th there's a very simple explanation that, that um, 
doesn't have a limit to the speed of light, that doesn't require quantum mechanics, that doesn't require general relativity. And so this electric universe type theory is something that I see time after time after time. But it, it misses some very fundamental physics and just with a, uh, a more uh, rigorous uh, introductory physics class, uh, the person, the proponent of that type of theory would understand why um, it's absolutely inconsistent with the, the physical and observational evidence that we do have about the nature of our universe. Well, I think people really do feel a little embarrassed um, they, when people present them with evidence that's uh, logical but, but flies in the face of their uh, public opinion. And, uh, you know, it, it's, been, it's been said before, uh, I think Daniel Dennett is the guy that, that, that started to popularise this, that there is no nice way of telling somebody that they're wrong. Uh, and people don't like being told that they're wrong. And they would rather double down on their, um, their misconceptions rather than uh, open up and change their mind. Of course, the, the heart of the scientific method is in changing your mind based, based on new evidence. And so this is one, one reason I think astronomy is going to be such a powerful tool if we start developing that type of curriculum early in the K-12 through environment. It encourages people to change their minds. It, it is presenting counterintuitive uh, evidence uh, on, on the actual um, uh, structure of the universe. So the types of uh, discoveries that the scientific community is moving towards, particularly in the area of astrophysics, are imaging more and more planets around stars. We've now developed many techniques. Uh, we're, we're developing advanced instrumentation that's going to move towards, I think within the next uh, several decades, getting an image of an Earth-like planet around a Sun-like star. We've seen in the past how um, ast astronomy images, astrophysics images have actually um, provided some kind of societal shift in the way we view our place in the universe. Uh, we saw the images uh, from Apollo 8 of Earthrise. Um, we saw the, the, the blue marble image from uh, uh, Apollo 17, I think it was. We saw the pale blue dot um, as Carl Sagan convinced NASA to turn a Voyager 1 round and take a picture of, uh, of Earth. We saw what's now the blue orb, which is a picture of Earth uh, taken by the Cassini spacecraft as it was on the far side of Saturn. But these are all of, of Earth. We know that uh, we've got uh, a sample of one where life has arisen in the universe. And one of the oldest questions, uh, one of the oldest scientific questions is, are we alone? And I think the next step forward in that is going to be uh, the uh, image of not, uh, not Earth itself, but of an Earth-like planet around a Sun-like star. I think that is going to really open up um, some cosmic humility uh, in the human race itself and kind of get us to really take pause of our place in this universe.